Okay, now we have no discussion. So, okay, I think we go uh, forward. So, Burkhard Rischke will have the next presentation uh, Strategies for Avoiding Complications of Artificial Disc Replacement in Extended um, Indications. As we um, let be alone from Dr. Stipe, so <laughs> we, with his um, statements, we would proceed with um, a new aspect I would like to present you. As my disclosure, I would like to present you the strategies for avoiding complications of artificial discrepancy in extended indications. Extended indications basically are contraindications for lumbar TDR, like the significant scoliosis, the stenosis or facet arthrosis, the spondylolisthesis, and as well the osteoporosis. So what we are doing with these cases of indicated extended um, problems, to fuse or not to fuse? That's a question like Hamlet. An indication, uh, extended, some uh, principles are to note. We have to observe and to consider the three column anatomy. We have to have adequate impl an implant design and we have to be able for adequate surgical technique. And last not least, we have to have an adequate case management due to the diagnosis related groups, uh, reimbursement in our insurance system. So what about the three column anatomy, the tripod? If we could um, um, Imagine our, our us and tripod. If we cut one um, chair, if we cut one one leg, the chair will be broken and and crashed down. And therefore, this is an uh, preparate from the anatom anatomy. Um, excuse me. Um, we have a triangular um, situation with the anterior column and the both posterior columns. So that we have to observe, observe. And we need, as I mentioned, an adequate implant design. It has to be natural-like, imitating the nature, the nature. Basically, the best, from my point, we could achieve at the moment is the six-degree freedom uh, with uh, flexion, extension, lateral bending, compression, tra and translation. And it should be prepared and designed with preserving the very important vertebral end plates. They should not destroy the vertebral end plates because they are very sensitive and could induce a subsiding of the implant. And this implant has to be deliver us a sustainability. It means it has to be reliable for the future and long time um, aspects. Then adequate implant design then means also a dynamic dorsal stabilization systems where, which are available in uh, several systems like uh, this here or the, the carbon rods. The carbon rods I prefer because I, this are my fingers, I can press the imitation here of the vertebral bodies. With, um, is this possible to have an adequate stabilization but preserving also a motion? And we have to have an adequate surgical technique. It means decompression, reconstruction, realignment, augmentation in case of osteoporosis, and at last not least, stabilization. Some uh, clinical cases. We have here um, the patient with um, uh, degenerative disc disease in two level uh, and an osteoporosis. And on the left side, it was a picture with a little bit uh, light. After the surgery, one week postoperatively, we see that the upper in prosthesis has been subsided into the vertebral body. And I decided uh, and immediately for a patogenous vertebral pasty and a reducement of the prosthesis and the stiffness with bone cement. And these are the pictures. Um, two years after the surgery, and this is remaining the situation as postoperatively. And we have the next example 
with a um, severe degenerative disc disease in L4-5 and L5-S1 with an osteochondrosis. And also in this case, as I use it regularly, um, I um, make a um, vertebral plus T uh, in simultaneously in the, from the anterior approach and put in the prosthesis. And uh, remarkable is that even this vertebral plus T, we can see a little bit subsiding of the end plate in the upper vertebral end plate, but without any symptoms. This is more a radiologic a cosmetic effect. And the next one is a severe scoliosis with uh, 25 degrees and uh, multiple degenerative disc diseases. So, so we uh, decided in the surgery in two steps. First, we reduce the scoliosis with uh, the um, dynamic uh, carbon rods fixator, and afterwards we implanted two artificial discs in L3, 4, and 4, no, in L2, 3, and 4, and 3, 4. And uh, you can see in the functional X-rays that she has a very a good uh, flexion and extension. And the next case is a spondylolisthesis at L3-4. The patient came to me with a, a lumbar back pain and um, uh, brought these MRIs with him without any x-rays. And the uh, advising doctor said he has to have a disc prosthesis. So we let make uh, functional x-rays and ob oblique pictures. And we can see um, a gap in the pedicle. So the reason for this degeneration was uh, instability and uh, spondylysis and spondylolisthesis. And we um, do it in uh, one session from posteriorly with a dynamic stabilization with the carbon rod. In America, is it uh, announced at less stiff because they don't have to use the, the word dynamic. So it means less stiff. The principle is that it is eight times um, flexible, more flexible than titanium. And I put in the, the disc prosthesis from anterior limb. And that's are the functional X-rays now one year later. This is a good flexion and good extension with a rhomb of seven degrees. And this patient has had a spinal canal stenosis and I did with the uh, for severe facet arthrosis and uh, combined uh, narrowing the spinal canal due to the disc protrusion and the facet hypertrophy. And I resected the facets and put in the dynamic fixator from dorsal and from anteriorly a disc prosthesis. And also in this patient, we can see a good flexion and extension in the functional X-rays two years later, at me meanwhile. And the next patient, um, he has a facet arthrosis, L345. It has been done a fusion in L5S1 some years ago. And uh, now she got a, a dysprosthesis, but previously we decided also for a second intervention from dorsal to perform the facets which we can see in the X in the CT scan with a severe arthrosis in a 3 4 and 4 5 so we I did a resection of the facets and put in a carbon rod fixator as the pedicles uh, were very slim so I couldn't put in the screw inside here and inside here so I put the screws in a 2 and in the um ilio crest both sides so that's for me the uh, um, statement. So from my point, that's are not anymore a contraindication. If we observe uh, the principles, a significant coliosis could be an indication. If we use a tripod stabilization, if you have a stenosis or arthrosis, we have to observe the decompression. In spondylolisthesis, also a tripod stabilization, and in osteoporosis, we have to use a vertebral augmentation, where I prefer, prefer the calcium phosphate bound cement, 
as a natural substance because if it uh, abbreviated into the vessels, it can be resorbed in the flu from the fluid. So that's um, my statement. I thank you very much for your attention and this picture. I thank you also for our host in this place here. <laughs>